Okay, back again. Uh, this time uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the relationship between Roll Center and Camber Gain. Uh, this is something that's very important to understand um, because the changes that you make to your suspension uh, setup uh, affect both of these uh, properties of your suspension. Um, so essentially, <clears throat> the what we've talked about before is the angle of the lower arm is uh, a direct indication of how low or high your uh, roll center is. The more down angle you have on this uh, arm, the lower your roll center is going to be. Uh, and then your camber gain is a function of the difference in the angle between your lower arm and your upper arm. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to quickly click through a few things. So if I raise my lower arm, you can see here I've raised my rear roll center or my roll center. If I raise the upper link, I <coughs> excuse me, I've lowered my roll center. So they're sort of opposite in nature. So if you raise the lower one, you raise the low roll center. If you raise the upper one, you lower the roll center. Uh, the other thing to note is, let's just go back to our starting setup. So if I raise my lower arm, I've also changed the amount of camber gain. So I've increased the angle between these two arms, so I now have more camber gain. So if I raise the roll center, I generally end up with more camber gain. Uh, if we do the same thing as we were looking at here and we raise the uh, upper link, now you can see I've lost camber gain because now the angle between these two arms is more parallel, so I'm getting far less camber gain. Uh, if I move this link inwards, let's go back to where we were. If I move this link inwards, it's going to have a very small effect on the um, roll center. Uh, and it's also going to affect the camber gain. The longer this arm is, the less camber gain change you're going to have. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a new setup. I'm going to call this uh, roll center camber gain. <laughs> and what I want to do is I want to start with the highest roll center I can get with this current setup. Uh, so that's as low as it can go and I want as much camber gain as I can get. So <laughs> there we're at uh, the roll center is as high as I can get it which is uh, 1.25 millimeters so that means I'm going to get the least amount of roll in the chassis and my camber gain is the maximum so I'm going to recover as, as much camber as I can as the chassis rolls. Uh, other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my <laughs> droop limit here because I don't want to get into a discussion on uh, what happens with droop and roll. Uh, that's something for another video. So let's just save that. And now we're going to do some investigations using the Dynamics tab. So what you see here first is the graph. Actually, I'm going to change to the rear suspension. So what you see here first is the graph of lateral G versus roll angle. So in with this setup that we have on here now, the maximum amount of roll that I can get is um, uh, 1.8 degrees. Okay, the other thing that we want to look at here is the uh, uh, camber versus lateral G. So now you can see that here we've got 0.36 degrees of camber. Uh, this is on the outside tire at maximum G, and we've got on the inside tire, come on, click on there. Clicking. We've got about 3.4, minus 3.4. So the range between these two here is about 3 degrees. So we got 3 degrees of camber difference between the inside and outside tire. And at our peak G that we're looking at here, uh, we still have negative camber. So let's just have a quick look at the animation here so you can see what's going on. I'm going to slow this down a little bit. And I'm going to zoom in. Right. 
tire. So what happens as the tire rolls, or as the chassis rolls, is the tire is trying to stand up. And camber gain is what we use to resist that uh, characteristic of the suspension. So you can see here, as we're rolling, the tire is trying to stand up. It's almost completely vertical, but not quite. We still have some negative camber left. And you can see that here with these two little red pointers from uh, the minus two degrees that we had set. Uh, we didn't quite get up to zero. We're just a little bit shy of zero, which is what we see here. So now let's look at what happens as we start to uh, change our suspension setup and what does that do to our uh, camber angles. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just lower the uh, suspension arm, which is going to lower my roll center, and it's also going to reduce the amount of camber gain I've got. <clears throat> so we lower this down to take all the shims out and go down to zero. You can see there now we're down at minus three millimeters of uh, our roll center and our camber gain has reduced from 0.3 to 0.2, 2.48. So let's apply that. And now let's see where we're at. So, so now we were at 0.36 now we're at 0.26 so we've lost we've lost uh, camber the tire is now more vertical as it gets to uh, the peak g which depending on how much deformation you're getting or how much change in the tire carcass you're getting you could actually be rolling onto the outside edge of the tire so the other thing to note here is that our range has increased as well so now we're <clears throat> we're more in the uh, three and a half millimeter or three and a half degree range between the camber on the outside tire and the inside tire. Okay, so let's go on to what I'll call stage three. So stage three, what we're going to do is we're going to raise the inner link as high as we can go. Now this is probably not something you're going to want to do, but let's just see what happens. So it's 2.5, let's go all the way up to 3. So there we're all the way up to 3. Now you can see our roll center is much lower, and our camber gain has actually gone negative. So that means that we're going to be actually, we're, we're not going to be recovering uh, camber as the chassis rolls. We're going to be losing more than you would if you had zero camber gain. So let's apply that and see where we're at. So now we can see here that we've got, keep forgetting to close that out. So now you can see that we've got out here, we're actually gone positive. So now we're, we haven't changed any of our static camber settings. We haven't changed anything of that nature, but now we are rolling onto the outside of the tire for sure. And on the inside here, our inside tire now is at minus four. So we've got more difference between the inside and outside tire, and <clears throat> we've rolled onto the outside edge of the tire. Let's just go back here and check and see what our, our um, roll angle is, too. When we started, we had about 1.8 degrees of roll. Now we're out almost to two. We are at two. We've got two degrees of roll in the chassis. So we've got more roll, which is creating more camber change plus we've lost camber gain which is creating more camber gain or more more uh, camber change <clears throat> okay let's do one more extreme one here so let's lower our outer link down uh, now you would never really do this in the real world or at least i can't think of a reason why you would so now we've got very low roll center we're down at minus 10 millimeters and we've got lots of negative camber gain. So we're really losing lots here. So let's apply this. So you can see here now we've got even more roll in the chassis because we've lowered our roll center further. So we're 2.1 degrees <clears throat> and our camber now we've got lots of positive camber, 0.6 degrees of positive camber and 4.8 so we got like 5.4 degrees of range between these two 
Um, whereas when we started, we only had about three degrees of range between these two. So we've increased the difference in the camber between the inside and outside wheel as the chassis rolls. Uh, and we're rolling on to the outside of the tire now. So this setup, I would expect to have really poor grip uh, unless you start adding a whole bunch of static camber. You know, you could get this back so you're not rolling on the outside edge, but you would have to add lots of, uh, of uh, static negative camber to do that. So that's about all I wanted to talk about in this episode. I just want you to make sure you understand that as you change your, you can't just say you're changing roll center, you're changing roll center and you're changing uh, the camber angles. Uh, it makes a big difference in the handling of the car when you're doing these things. So you really need to, to have a good understanding of, of what's going on. So that's it for this episode. The next one we're going to talk about, we're going to start talking about steering and steering Ackerman. So stay tuned. <laughs>